again. I'm Roy Underhill. Welcome back to the Woodwright Shop. It's daughter Eleanor. Yes, daughter Eleanor on the banjo. And she's going to join me and see how to make this wonderful little rocking cradle. Yeah, Let's you're going to make it. Yeah, Let's all right. Eleanor is going to play while I do some of the turning, but that's the last thing we'll do. We'll see how to do the joints on this wonderful little cradle. First, let's look at the whole thing here. Yeah, right. it's beautiful. Painted in the Indian style, is it not? It yeah. is. Yeah, this Canadian. is Canadian. Canadian, right. And in fact, it's odd. This came from a book called Construction of American Furniture Treasures, but apparently it's Canadian. That's mm -hmm. a book by a man named Lester Margon, written in the mid-20th century. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And painted in the Indian style, uh, or the First Nation style, uh, but with uh, traditional English joinery. Very simple cradle. We're going to see how to make it. In fact, Eleanor, I'm going to give this to you if you promise not to try and fill it up too soon. I think I can do that. Okay, very good. All right. Not do that. <laughs> All right, not do that. All right. Let's go ahead and knock it off its rocker, which seems appropriate at this time. There we go. There you go. There's the rocker, ten and on. We'll go ahead and take off this corner post and see how it is constructed. In fact, let's take out the bottom. Too. Get that out of there. Get the bottom out. And this is, of course, the corner post. <laughs> and there we go. See how the tenons come together and the way they're beveled? They're secretly meeting. Yes, they are. And they are uh, uh, as deep as they can get inside the little mortises that are cut that join in an L shape inside these posts here. And if we tilt this up, you can see what that looks like in vertical section, those tenons coming together inside the post. And that allows you to extend them as deep as possible. All right. That's a good thing. It is. Well, that makes it strong. You don't want this to come apart. You don't want them when the cradle will rock and the baby down will come, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, exactly. Yeah, all right. All right. all right. Well, let's go ahead and work on this piece right here. And Eleanor will do some of the carving and trim work and all that kind of business. Well, let's start out. I'm going to show you how to do this now. This is the first piece we need to make here, this end piece. And I've scaled this down from Lester's book. Let me get the uh, hold fast. And you can have the mallet, Eleanor, because you like, you like to do that. Ah! All right. Get the whole fist. I think you did well there. All right. Let me have that again. Where's the, where's the mallet here? Let me tap that in. All right, I want to bring this a little more parallel to the bench. This is 14 inches wide at the top, 11 inches wide at the bottom, 9 and a half inches tall. And it's scaled down from uh, Lester Morgan's book. They had big babies. Yeah, I th it was too big for me. All right. So we're going to start by making the tenons. And you can see how it has this piece here that fits inside a groove uh, cut into that corner post. Let me reach back here and grab the corner post. All right. You can see how that fits into a groove right there. Mm -hmm. right. So that groove holds that That's shoulder and makes it look, yeah, it makes it look better on the uh, face side there. So we're going to just trim this down using, after you've got it good and square, use this tool right here. This is called a moving fillet plane. It has a little nipper right there that cuts across the grain. And then this diagonal iron keeps it pulled in and also helps in cutting across the grain. There's the depth stop, and here is the fence. And that is set at 1 and an eighth, and this is set at 3 eighths. So we're going to take half of this 3 quarter inch board uh, away underneath here. All right, now okay. I'm going to go ahead and start, Eleanor. Let's see if we're held well. All right, yeah. You can see how the nipper cuts first. It cuts, mm -hmm. it cuts that across the grain and keeps it smooth. If you didn't have that nipper, it might uh, leave a raggedy edge there. Oh, All right, so the nipper cuts across the grain ahead of the iron. Now, it's choking a little bit there, but just a little bit. Uh, see how it filled up with shavings? Yeah. What I did, and I may need to do it again, I put some uh, carnauba wax in there, just wax or tallow or candle wax or beeswax will keep your shavings flowing out. Now, the other thing is we're going against the grain this way. Right. So that'll tend to make it choke a little more than you want. All right, so I have to reach in a little bit. On the other slope, we won't have that choking quite as bad a problem. All right, I'm gonna let you get, bring this down the rest of the way. And again, I hope that doesn't choke, but it's, it's going against the grain right there. Let me let you try that. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right. So she'll go on down until that depth stop and try and hold it vertical. You don't want to have it tilted in or down or any other way. Yeah. It's a good you know, make, feeling. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a great plane. It is a great plane. It works real well. It's called a moving fillet plane. Very old tool, but it has that understanding 
of wood all the way through in it with the diagonal iron for cross grain and the nipper ahead and the depth stop just makes it real fast. Well, you're about down there. Yeah. Okay, I'll finish it off because, yeah, I think you had a little bit of tilt, so it may have taken a little bit away. That's all right. That's all right. All right. We're going to use another tool now to do uh, an interesting thing that is somewhat decorative and somewhat functional. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> because we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> This is called the bead, and if you look at this, what, the way you do it, the reason you do it is a sharp corner is very fragile as well as uncomfortable for baby, but it takes dents there. See how that dents very easily? Right. But you still want a sharply defined corner, and what you do is put a bead on the edge. This bead here, that's that rounded point. What you're doing is moving the square edge back about a quarter inch from the end, and that won't take any dents in it. That's much, much stronger there. Mm -hmm. see? And so that edge is protected all the way across. So we're going to put a bead on here with a beater, a little hand beader. And if you know your literature, you may have heard of the uh, vulnerable bead or the invulnerable bead. I think that's, maybe you haven't. You didn't, I study, have not heard. You didn't study that one. All right. Well, it'll come. And I'm going to take off this corner before just using the block plane and bring that down. And here is the beater, and this is a reproduction of an early one that's still making tools like this. Very nice. You can see this has a, a double-ended iron there for two different types of bead, but there's the one that's the business end right there. You see that bead. And the fence right here, mm -hmm. that fence has to hold against the wood very, very tightly. And uh, you just scrape. Yeah, you just scrape, exactly. It kind of leans forward and scrapes. And the reason I took off that edge, you don't want anything to push it out that way because that would damage the bead. So you just scrape it down and keep that fence tight against there and don't let it slip or slip this way or because, boy, you will mess it up. Oh, my, my, I'm coming loose here. Hold fast, hold fast. There we go. All right, so bring that on down. Yeah. All right. And very smooth. Does a nice job. You can actually do this with a... Uh, a wood screw set in a block of wood. I don't know if you've ever done that. You set a mm. wood screw in and use that yeah. to do it. All right, let me let you finish this up here a little bit. It'll be tough on the end that's a little nearer uh, to you. On the, on the back end, that's tough to get that thing on there. All right. So this is the hand beater or reader. You want me to finish it up? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't want to mess it up. That's all right. Now, the reason we're doing this now is because we need to know this measurement. This will be beaded top and bottom. And we need to know this because we don't want that bead uh, to be part of the tenon. Because if you look at it here, see the bead it going into... Is this the right way? Uh, let me see. I think I can do it like... Um, no, let's see. I think it's, it's going to go this way. All right. Sorry, I have to turn this all around, Eleanor. Uh, you don't want the bead to show. You want the bead to butt up against the wood there. Mm -hmm. And that makes it smooth in there. See, so that should butt in there. And that looks real smooth. If you had that groove going into the mortise, you would see the hollow spot, and it wouldn't look good. You want this oh, to look okay. nice there. See? So that's why you want to take that off. I guess I can leave that on there. All right. So here we are. We now know what that dimension of the bead is, and we will cut it off as we go to the next stage. Now I'm going to put the tenons on here. And here's an odd thing. The tenons are going to be, so there's the depth of the bead. The tenons are going to be at an angle to the grain of the wood, and that makes it weak right there, doesn't it? Yeah. Because the grain goes like that, and that little piece could split off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's a weakness. But in a, in a piece like this, that is, uh, uh, you know, you know, if you were doing like a stool or something that you were sitting on where there was a lot of load, mm -hmm. you'd worry about that a little more. Uh, I think this will be all right. So there's a quarter inch, and there's a quarter inch right there. All right, and now let's see. I've got the long, we got a long tri-square. Yeah. Let's set this there, and this is not critical, just so it's housed in that upright, and that will keep it from warping and keep a gap from showing in there. So now I'm going to get the saw. Let's see, I've got it right here, and I'll cut this off. Now, normally, again, Eleanor, you want to cut from the face side. What are you doing? You're cutting from the back side. It's all wrong. Stop, stop, stop. Because it's going to leave roughness on the outside. Hmm. All right, so normally you don't do that. 
but for the sake of time on this one, I'm going to go ahead right, so cut these. Give me the bow saw. I think it's hanging on. The, yeah, hanging on the wall there. Show you a trick with the bow saw. Uh, coping saw is just a small version of this, so you could certainly do it with a coping saw. But this just has a thin blade that you can turn in the wood. Oh wow! Yeah, so that cuts right along. If you go vertical, it tends to kind of jump around a little bit. See how it's jumping there? So you can lay it down a little more and get more blade engaged, oh, yeah. and it should cut a little. Straighter. Yeah, that looks yeah, better. Yeah. So, all right, so now we've got those two tenons cut out. The two tenons. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to do a thing uh, with the beveling. We saw, again, how that uh, beveling was important. We're going to do that with a paring chisel. And here I'm going to let you do it, Eleanor. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take this sharp chisel and just pare down straight across the grain to true this up, make sure this doesn't have any high spots in it. All right. And now... We're going to set out a 45 degree bevel on this piece by hold your finger right there and hold your finger so that that is set to the depth of that. See, this finger is the fence now. All right. That's to the depth and then run it along. Mm. See? And do the second. Yeah, exactly. So there's your gauge. Set it right like that and set it like that. And by making sure this distance is the same as this distance, you know that this angle is 45 a 45 degree. 45 degree angle. There. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and pair this one off in three pieces there. And by that I mean I'm going to do a third of it on the first pass, third on the second pass, and a third on the final pass there, down to the final bevel there. There we go. There we go. All right, all right. Now I'm going to let you do this other one here. Okay. That's kind of cool. We're going to do a sharp, sharp chisel. In soft wood. <laughs> yes, but she's doing fine. All right, just take it off a third of it, just like that. Again, down the grate, and then on another third on the second pass. Yeah, right on across. So those, that bevel will allow the tenons to reach as deep as possible into the mortises without interfering with each other. You can also do this other ways by making them pass over each other, but I always like the bevel. All right, very good. So there it is, that's ready to go. And uh, that is the way it is going to look when it is assembled. There's the bevel, and there it goes into the mortises just like that. All right, but we have some decorative work to do now. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna give that to yeah. you and get you started. Well, here, you've got one already started right yeah. here on your little barrel down here. There. Yeah, I did some of the... Yeah free drawing, but it's a, the traditional design. And okay. Just take this, I don't know what you call it. What do you well, call it? Well, it's a V-gouge. Uh, go ahead and, and do name. a little bit there. Yeah. Well, you use a uh, vayner, which is more U-shaped. Uh, uh, also works well. This is a V-shaped uh, gouge there. All right. You just got to learn to control this thing and make sure it's sharp. You know, lower the back end to uh, come out of the cut. Yeah. There you go. So it just works along. Now, the reason she's doing well, this is the way it was done in the original, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The way they did it was incise the outline and then paint within it. Mm -hmm. So the way you did it here was to, gosh, you've gotten good at that. Yeah. It's wonderful. She is, oh, let me get the one she painted. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. I said that didn't look like much, did it? Here. <laughs> but here it again, you see, you've painted it uh, with the colors uh, that was in Lester Morgan's book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you've added in this black inside there. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So you've got that incised pattern. Well, I'll let you work on that while I do this guy right here, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to do that and show you how, again, this fits on here. I'm going to go ahead and, and, in fact, let's look at the whole thing again. It's uh, our little cradle from Canada with these neat decorations. So here it is. There's the, one of the rockers. We're ready to go. I'm going to do this corner pose now that has the mortises going all the way through. 
So I'm going to work on this with a piece of walnut. Now we're going to do some walnut instead of uh, maple, which I have on Canadian, and we do maple, of course. We're going to do walnut. And because the mortises are on the inside, you put your sorriest face up when you lay this out. Lay these out like this. And by sorry, I mean the sapwood faces. So I lay the sapwood faces upwards and then come down the height. Now, I scaled this down from Lester Morgan's uh, drawing. I thought they must have bigger babies back then, I think. So lay this across there. So there's the top. This is where the turnings are going to go. All right, and you clamp these together. I'll come back and redo this. But this is, this is what, what we're laying out now. There's the first one. All right, and I take one of these with a tenon on it and lay it out. Let's see, it has to go like this because that's the top. So here's the next line, here's the next line, here's the next line. All right. And bring those across. Now this is going to put the mortises of all our pieces all the way across. So there's the next one. Of course, clamp them together so they don't move around. All right, so you lay out all four at the same time. Then take one and come around this way. Yeah. So we're still on the inside. All right, there's one of the mortises. Here's the next one. Right. We're still on the inside of the piece. And now lay out the width of the mortise using uh, the marking gauge. This is set because we're doing three quarter inch wood into an inch and a half square piece. We've set this for three eighths. So that's going to have this uh, a quarter of the size of the corner post. And lay this out from the face side now with these scratch lines and make them very deep because they are the first mechanical cut. You're not just measuring. You're doing your first cut in the wood. And now the other side, again, down like that, down like that. All right. Then mark the ends with a 3 8 inch wide chisel there. All right. All right, and there. All right, and then we're going to start taking that out. Now I have got one, I think, that I have already started here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this guy right here and I'll work it with uh, the auger down. Let's see if I have got the auger. Have I got one of these already worked down a little bit? There we go. Okay, you can see how that one is. I'm going to go ahead and do this side and show you how this works. I'm going to start it with a brace and bit. You can see I've already done that other side a little bit. We use a 3 8 inch uh, brace a bit in the brace and count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 turns, the lead screw makes a constant feed and so you do 25 turns and you'll go to the right depth. But that's just true for this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right. And that'll keep going. And we work down, then do the middle, this one and this one. That'll get us, of course, to this stage right here. Ta da All right. So we have intersecting mortises. And now you can start paring down. So you pair the sides, setting your paring chisel right in that groove eventually. You get, get it, pair, work your way back, just like we did before when we were beveling the tenons and get down the cheeks and then down the ends working your way back in. Right. So you work this down. Those two mortises will meet there inside the wood. All right, now you've got to do, after you've gotten this done, all right, the groove. You notice how there's that groove that's right here. All right. There's that groove. We've got to do that all the way down. That's again with the 3 8 inch and do a couple of little taps, oh, oh, oh. tangled up, <laughs> one, two, all right, and then a few more taps, one, two, and each time you do that, you break out a little chunk, and two taps, one, two, is about a quarter inch, and just actually a little bit more, one, two, and then one, two, and then one, two, all right, all the way on down, and then clean that out, and that's why you want those sides carefully cut, with that ga with the gauge right at the start and don't see I messed up the inside you don't want to that's okay but you don't want to mess up this outer side 
because that is going to be showing. So you don't want to have this ragged. This is not a really great joint if it gets torn up. Now to bring that groove to the right depth and using a little router, this is what we call a little router plane, a thumb router, works down there, levels that by cause that blade hangs exactly a quarter inch deep below there and plus a little bit more and then you can come down the side and trim those sides just right. Yeah, and what will that give you? That will give you a piece like this but without the decorative turning. So that's our next stage. We're going to go and do the decorative turning. Eleanor, how are you doing there? Doing good. Gosh, you've really made some wonderful progress. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right, well, let's go ahead and work on the lathe, though, right now. And that's where I'm going to need your banjo back up. Oh, OK. All right, no because problem. music, music will help us turn out the best of our work. <laughs> so I've got a piece. So you do it square first. You do it square, and then, uh, uh, do all the mechanical stuff and then do the turnings last. So you center it, you get everything ready there and start in with the banjo. Yeah. Now I'm going to work on this top end using the uh, skew chisel to nick. Nick the wood. Then the sizing tool. Then I'll come over with a gouge to bring it down. Make that nice round shoulder. Turn it. Turn it round. <laughs> I tell you what, we can't go, go into the intricacies of turning. Let's look at some of the more uh, esoteric aspects of this. Are you ready? All right. All right. Look at the <laughs> way you put this thing together. We're going to finish this guy up, show you some of the oddities you have to do to make a rocker work. All right, so that was oh, a quick, uh, yes. quick turning. So here again, those are our beveled tenons, and here are our mortises and the slots, so we're ready to put them together. So put that right like that. Let's see, if, can we squeeze it together? Let's, let's do it yeah, like that. Squeeze it together. Squeezy, squeezy. Squeeze all these corners. Yeah, we got lots of directions to squeeze in, don't we? <laughs> squeeze, squeeze. Did we get that right? Yeah, okay. I guess that's okay. Something, I think we got a chip in there because it's holding up. But now let's go ahead and put on the rocker. So now we're on the rocker. Right. And the way the rocker works is, of course, if it was round, it would keep on rocking. It'd just roll away and keep on rolling over. And if it was flat, it wouldn't rock at all, but the center of gravity would lift up and it would tend to go back to its um, original location. So that means you have to have what? <laughs> uh Ellipse. An ellipse, right. So this has to be an ellipse, and you generate that with a piece of string uh, having two points up here. We don't have time to fool um, with it right now, but that's how, that's how you generate it. But who invented that? The chicken, of the course. The chicken, of course, because if their eggs were completely round, they would roll away. They would roll away. So here we are. We're ready to put in the bottom now. So we generate that ellipse, take a bevel, and we take the bevel and use it as the guide to plane the bottom to fit. Now you can see how I've made this a little more acute. You know why that is? No. Because <laughs> I want to have a cute baby. All right. So there we are. There's the bottom in our Canadian cradle. So it's looking pretty good there. Well, listen, Eleanor, thank you for joining me. Thank thanks you. for helping. I hope you enjoy this uh, cradle, but not too soon. Okay. And thanks for joining me, Roy Underhill, in the Woodwright Shop. So long. Learn more about the Woodwright Shop and traditional woodworking at PBS Online. You can find us at pbs.org.